nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Jacob here, we're back, back down at the field. Today I'm going to run you through once again how to pass the rugby ball, but we're going to try and make it a little bit shorter this time. My, my previous video I will link in the description box, but it was about nine minutes long and uh, no one's got time for that. I want to get you guys back on the field as soon as possible passing the rugby ball like you should. It's pretty basic, but it's something, you know, it does take practice and practice, 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 practice. Practice makes perfect, you're never going to be perfect, but you can get damn close. I'm certainly not there, but I will give you my two cents. So anyways, in the game of rugby, rugby league, touch, etc., you've got two main types of pass. You've got a spiral pass, which comes out of the hand like that, which has a dominant hand and a guiding hand, or you've got an end over end pass, which you have both hands on, like that on the same part of the ball, and you're going to use both hands equally for the power and for, and for the guidance. So, as far as hand position goes for the spiral pass, everyone's going to be different, everyone's going to have a dominant hand. Funnily enough, I'm right handed, but my dominant hand is my left hand, so I pass better to the, to the right. Usually if you're a right hander, you'll pass better to the left using your right hand as your dominant hand, but for some reason, I started, when I, you know, five years old, I started passing the rugby ball. That's the way I chose, and that's the way I got accustomed to. So obviously you can, you can get just as good Either way, the last thing you want is to make a make an awesome break and um, have you know a teammate either side and absolutely butcher a try because you, you stuffed up the pass. You want it to just happen naturally, um, and I'm going to try and run you through just quickly how to do that. So hand position, um, I got a bit sidetracked there. <laughs> That's what happened last time. If you think about halfway like that, you're going to want your your dominant hand, your guiding hand, to be on the bottom half of the ball top hand which is going to put a little bit of spin on the ball but not much most of the spin and power is going to come from the dominant hand um, and you're going to want the, the top hand to be on the top half of the ball so as far as the movement the body position um, you're going to want to really engage absolutely everything you know um, not only is there you know your foot placement and your foot position going to um, affect how the pass comes out but you're really going to want to make it a, bit, a, a really horizontal movement. You, you're not going to want it to waver. You're going to want to generate power back here and really come across, you know, and power through. So you're going to want to let it go. It's spinning in your hands like that and you let it go like that. So as far as, you know, it's one thing to pass standing still. It's another thing to pass when you're running along. That's what you really want to get down pat and as far as you know, foot position and, and body position. When you're running along to pass, you're going to want to you're going to want to plant that outside foot to give you a nice base to then power through. So, obviously, in the game of rugby, you can only pass backwards. <laughs> For you Americans, you can only pass backwards. So that you know that that foot placement, that step is going to give you that power to or that you know that pivot to then get the power not only to pass sideways but also to turn around and pass backwards because you can't do a forward pass. So you know in, in real time motion it's gonna look something like this. So what I did was I ran up and my last step was like this with my outside foot. I got all the all the power from that. I had the ball like back here like this at that point, and I powered through like this, slightly backwards of course, with the spin on the ball, using my dominant hand to really power through and spin the ball. And it came out nice. Trust me, it came out nice, and it landed over there. For the spiral pass, the same goes either which way. I'm going to want to plant that outside foot, which is my right foot this time, get that power and really come through with a horizontal movement, power through and pass through. So then you've got the end over end pass, which as I said before, there is no dominant hand and guiding hand. You're going to want to use both hands. Somewhere, if, you, if you're talking once again about the halfway on the ball, you're going to want both hands to be on the bottom half of the ball. Basically, I mean, everyone's got their own style. 
Jonathan Thurston, someone like someone like that in the NRL makes this pass popular. Um, but I'm not sure why, but it seems seems to be in rugby league that they use it more than more in rugby union. But you know, the only the only real reason I can see why people would do that is because it's more accurate and there's less chance of it slipping out of your hand. Uh, because obviously, when you've got uh, a nice, you know, when you've got a nice dry ball, it's amazing to pass with a nice, a nice dry new ball with the with the with the grip on there. That's oh my god, it's it's amazing to play with. But let's say it's raining, um, it's a completely different story. You know, there's less points scored, there's more knock-ons, and you're going to want the pass to be to be um, more of a you know one that's going to stick more times than not because yeah in a wet game it's just it can get ridiculous um, so that's what you're going to use this one for you're just going to want to get a really nice tight grip and just once again get that power that horizontal movement and power through the foot placement's exactly the same you're going to run up plant that outside foot and then come through and pass so real time it's going to look like this And that's about it guys, that's passing the ball. Get out there. Uh, like I said in my last video, what I like to do still, if I can get a mate that wants to do it, um, at my age, you know, people are dropping off like flies. Uh, but I like to just go down the field, get a mate, go down, just run up and down, do lengths, just passing. You know, if you go up one way, you're passing to the right, come back down, you're passing to the left. You know, practice little chip and chases, little, little X cuts and, and pop passes and things like that. Um, it's great fun. So good luck guys. I hope that I hope that helps. Check out my other rugby tutorial videos. There's a few there. And um, have a great day. Make your next next game an absolute cracker. Score a try. Because we all know that's an amazing feeling. Or better yet, pass the ball, do an awesome assist for a try. Because uh, that's that's just as good of a feeling so we'll catch you later guys see you in the next one peace